what is jealousy? <laughs> so, well, that's the easiest question. Jealousy is comparing yourself with somebody else. That's all. And why do you compare yourself with somebody else? Because I don't feel good about me, so I look at somebody else, and I want to be better than them, so I compare myself with them and I try to prove to people I am better than them because I didn't feel good about me. As simple as that. I don't think it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's enough? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Why would you compare yourself with somebody else? If you truly love a person, yes, you don't even feel jealous at all. You will. The moment I'm jealous, I question loving this person. And why nobody can do this? It's the same. Yeah, the first question you asked me is the most critical question because nobody made me feel safe in this world. If I don't feel safe, the person who with me in the relationship, I will always feel less and I will be jealous because I'm not safe. Do you test your partner if they love you or not? There's no test. Love has no test. Do you ever decide you want to love somebody? Love doesn't ask questions, doesn't test, nothing. So, if you want to solve this, okay, uh, uh, with something to do now, you seek this from your partner instead of your mother. Would you allow your partner to see you vulnerable and to take care of you, to give you back what you missed? Two people can do this, two people. Your partner and a very, very skilled therapist who will not abandon you. And it's very difficult to find because most therapists are traumatized themselves. It has to be someone who had been traumatized and recovered. They know how to make somebody else recover. Or your partner. How do we find a recovered psych psychiatrist? I have to keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, you, you ask support from your partner. Will you allow your partner to take care of you? Will you allow you in relationship with your partner in your weakest moments not to run away from them can you give me an example yes it's very simple um, what happened when you feel very vulnerable and weak what do you do i'm trying to be stronger okay this when it happens again you go to your partner and tell them I feel very weak. Uh, can you hold me? If you become strong, yes, you will. This is the defense you have that's stopping you from healing. Because in the childhood, in our childhood, the moment when we're vulnerable, this moment, we need another person to come and to be in our presence yes in this critical moment when we're extremely vulnerable and to teach us this world is safe and this happened in when the brain is developing and if this person is present there with you yes your brain will actually develop a system that i am safe here if this person is not around is not holding you is not a, taking care of you, you will do it by yourself, like you're doing now. So when you become vulnerable again later, when you're older, you don't have the system, there is somebody there near you that can actually take care of you. So you become very strong. The strength you have is actually your defense mechanism. Would you allow your partner to see you very weak? Ask him to stay with you and be next to you. Would you be able to do this? Okay, don't say anything. When you're vulnerable, sit next to your partner and look at them. 
can you just look at them? They will know. They will know. Without even saying anything. Can you even sit five minutes without doing something for them? Is that possible? What I'm saying to you, this is not the, the, the best way. Because the best way happens without words. You need some, a lot of work. But this is what you can do at the moment. Would you be able to go towards your partner, not away from them? Let's say it this way. Can you do that? I can try this. Not once or twice. As many times as possible. Uh, this means the repetition is the key. Yes. This is the method, the repetition. Yes. Uh, one of the challenges we have now, and I have with many people when I work with them, is they keep thinking of a way to do it. The, the relationship to me is the only place we heal. It's the only area we can heal. Or the proper, deep, long-term therapy, as I told you before. So can you work with your partner together to make her feel safe and make her make you feel safe? It's two ways. When she's down, you take care of her. When she's up, you also take care of her to celebrate how good she feels and the other way around. Now, if you, which one are you going to start first? Uh, it looks like a theory. It looks, yeah. it sounds very good, yes, but it's, it's not easy. easy. I agree, it's a theory, yes, a theory. But this is what you want. This is what you want to hear. Because if we, this is what you want to hear now. If you work on yourself, this you can manage all this. It will happen naturally. I just remember something important because of our conversation. All our problems in this life related to another person. Only in relationship we are exposed. What happened between you and your mother? It's playing itself out in your relationship now. The same thing, exactly the same. The fear of this connection, neglect, abandon, whatever has happened before is happening again. So what do you need to do? You need to go to the source. And you, there is no way you can do something and something will happen. There's no way. Because this is another dimension. The dimension we're looking at we need to go to these places that you cannot touch anymore and go back and heal them again. And that needs a lot of skills. The short-term work is, is what I told you to do with your partner now. But the long-term work is a different kind of work with a proper therapy work. Do we see our mothers in our partners? It not uh, you could say that, but you, but I can say it in a different way. You see the effect of your mother on you, and it plays out with your partner. You see the effect it had on you. Exactly what I said about your father. It has an effect on you. Your father is not an issue anymore. Your mother not the issue anymore. But the effect she had on you, you have a reaction inside of you. I use this metaphor. The war is over, but the soldiers are still fighting. The war with your parents is finished, but inside of you, somebody is still fighting the war that's over. And you need to talk to these soldiers and tell them the war is finished. But in order for the soldier to know the war is finished, the war is finished, you may have to go back to the war again and tell them, okay, look, now we're finishing it together. Now, in your relationship with your partner, yes? If you allow your partner to see you at your worst moment and be there in your partner's worst moment as well, then you can heal each other. It's two ways, not one way. Because the trauma we have in our life happened to us at the time when there was no thinking. Who is only feeling? There was nothing. 
in the first two years everything happened and now we're trying by thinking trying to fix it impossible the moment you start thinking you block your feelings we we think if we find a method or a way to do something will be okay there is no method whatsoever the only way I think now or I after all these years of my work is to be with someone as much as possible when you are vulnerable when you're small it didn't happen once or twice the rejection disconnection the abandonment happened and repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated until now you have a system in your brain that's insecure so when we are vulnerable first thing that come to you I have to be strong all your traumas in your intellect not in your emotions the trauma is emotion so this interview the way you're talking to me it is one level but your trauma is another level our trauma is in feelings not in intellect so what happened is you can deal with your trauma in two ways we can talk about it now and discuss it discuss jealousy discuss pain discuss depression it's not the same as experiencing it can you experience the pain and depression and jealousy can you really experience it and be open and feel the pain of it in the presence of somebody who can take care of you when these things happened to us before our development was sabotaged it, it's our development stopped something else took over which is a protection we protected ourselves from what happened to us before we're talking about it, but it will take a huge amount of courage and support to go back to the stages where our development was sabotaged and it need support in the presence of another person I have a different face I have a false personality and the false personality can be angry depressed jealous worried traumatized that is the face you have in relation to another person so because it what happened to you happened by somebody else you cannot do it by yourself we have a false self even this moment talking to us now talking together you're talking to me for your false self i'm talking to you from my false self because we are careful we're trying to do a good interview i'm trying to answer your questions and you're trying to ask me good questions <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's another world going on between us, another world. No, why, why are you trying to make a good interview? I don't know, for me, for the others, for everybody. For your false self, not for you. Why I'm here? <laughs> so people see it and admire me. Yes, this is not us. Are masks good for something? This is our masks, not us. Are good? The masks? They're good to survive for now, <laughs> not for the long term. These masks will collect as much money and admiration in the world, but will never be truly happy. Menis, what is the most common fear worldwide? Being alone and abandonment because this is going back to the first question this what happened to us all of us when we didn't have the connection with the people who brought us to this life and this is in the back of our mind not everybody is so conscious of it so we try so hard to compensate for this but we know I have this saying that you can't have enough of what you don't really need so we're trying to get other things but this is not what we need so that fear is always there in all of us. I think personally, the biggest disease we have in the world is this. More than cancer, more than anything else, is being alone. What is your biggest fear? 
Yeah, the same, like everybody else, of being alone too. Nobody's above this. What I have learned over the years, it is absolutely impossible to help anybody. But to inspire someone? Yes, inspiring people is different. When, when people see you successful and happy, this is the best help to give to people. This is very difficult because we are in a culture now and everybody obsessed trying to help somebody else. We're doing this because we're trying to compensate of what we have inside that we cannot fix. My job is very sensitive, very difficult. I cannot help anybody. And when people come to the courses and hear this from this from me, they get very scared because they come and thinking I will help them. I'm not going to help anybody. I cannot. I don't have that power to help anybody. But if they see who I am and what I'm doing, this is the best help you can do to people. What I'm saying to you now is the most important message the parents need to hear. I, I will remind you of a, a, a line Gandhi always used to say. He said, be the change you want to see in the world. Be what people want to be. And your presence to them is enough. The moment you try to help them is no good. Because what you will do unconsciously you will try to, to, to make them do something that you couldn't do. It's like striking back at them. You're trying to compensate for what you cannot do. The only way to help anybody is to be an example for them. And this is what our parents fail to do. They're trying to teach us from a bad example. So what we learned, they're a bad example. It is not what we say to people, it's not what we teach people, it's who we are. Exactly who we are inside, it's our consciousness, it's the teacher. Not what we do, not what we teach, not what we say. Anything you do in your life comes from your own consciousness. Whether you cook, you drive, you are a doctor, you're an engineer, if the consciousness is clear, it comes through your work by itself without making people do anything. If you're angry with anybody, if you hate anybody, you live in their energy field. You carry them straight away because you're thinking about them. This is one thing. If you hate something that anybody doing, yes, because you have it. Do you realize that you are your parents or not? In this life, you are, every one of us, trapped, haunted by everything we hate and everything we love. Every, if you hate anything, it will never leave you alone. If you want anything, it will never leave you alone. You see, you see what I mean? All enemies are the same. Everywhere in the world, all the neighboring country fight because they they are the same. So what you hate about your father, yes, he's already taught you this and you don't like it. So you see it in him all the time. You will discover that you are the same person. It's, it's a, it, it, there is no one way, it's two ways all the time. So if I'm angry with somebody, I will become like them. You remember in the course we did this big game and what happened? If you fight anybody, you'll become like them. If you resent anybody, you'll become like them. Because you are, you are caught in their energy. 